Hi everyone. In this lecture, I'll start with the discussion of common gate amplifiers, or rather the low frequency response of, uh, or, or low frequency or DC response of uh, common gate amplifiers. So as the name suggests, the gate terminal is the common terminal and the input is applied at the source and the output will be taken at the drain. So again, uh, we'll try to compute, especially in this lecture, I'll mainly focus on the amplifying abilities of a common uh, source, a common gate amplifier. Where does the uh, common gate amplifier find its application? So one of the applications is the input impedance of a common gate amplifier uh, can be quite low and uh, it's often used in maximum power transfer. When, whenever there is a need for maximum power transfer, uh, we can use a common gate amplifier. So if you look at a common uh, source amplifier, the input impedance was infinity. So we may have to add some extra circuitry for it to actually uh, exhibit a resistive input impedance at low frequencies. But for common gate configuration, naturally, it, we will later see it actually offers a very low input impedance. So often uh, it is, I mean, our controlled, current controlled input impedance. You could you can control the input impedance using the bias currents. So we can we we'll later see that uh, how it's, what is the input impedance depend upon and all that. So it's often used in applications where there is a requirement for maximum power transfer, in, especially in the front end stages of uh, uh, RF receivers. Okay. And the other application is trans impedance amplifiers. So wherein uh, you would have a very weak current source and with a poor source resistance, then you may need to transfer this current from a, you know, from, uh, because if you, you don't want to directly, for example, a trans impedance amplifier is an amplifier which would convert a current input to a load, uh, to, a, to, a, to a voltage output. So essentially you need a circuit which can actually have a very low input impedance so that it can draw in all the current and deliver it to a load resistance, okay, at high impedance. So uh, this circuit deliver all that current to a load impedance, okay. So such a, uh, such a circuit is a, a, trans, a trans impedance amplifier. And uh, again, uh, this is used in, for example, in one example I can think of right now is the photodiode, uh, okay. So when light is impinged on this diode, then uh, a diode will produce a reverse current, which will be proportional to the intensity of the light that is impinged on it and proportional to that you can generate a voltage using a transfer impedance amplifier okay so these are the common applications of uh, uh, common gate amplifiers so we'll now see what is the gain that you can get out of a common amplifier especially the maximum gain as we discussed in the previous lectures we compute three important parameters the input resistance the input resistance as shown in this figure, the input resistance, output resistance, and the intrinsic gain. So in this lecture, I'll mainly focus on the intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier. So unlike the common source amplifier and uh, common, uh, we will later see the common drain amplifier, common gate amplifier exhibits some very interesting properties. Okay, so that's why I thought I'll spend one full lecture just on the intrinsic gain and the, the gain of a common gate amplifier. So to find the intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier, so first we assume that we are, we are going to drive the uh, input with a source of zero source resistance. So we are going to drive it to the source of zero source resistance and the load, the drain terminal will be open now. So of course, if your lambda is zero, so if I assume R naught is infinity, so I'm applying a current VI here. So VI has nowhere to flow, you know, so in fact, if you see that the output resistance is infinity here because if the drain is open and R0 is infinity, so directly you will have a very large gain. You know, but even if there is a small variation of current flowing through a large impedance, you're going to get a very high gain. The gain will be infinity. I mean, this is true even for common source configuration. In a common source configuration, if you assume R0 is infinity, then theoretically the maximum gain, the intrinsic gain of the MOS itself is infinity. Uh, the gain will only be limited by the load resistance you connect across it. Okay, but if you, but in reality, there will always be a finite R0, which will limit your gain to a finite value. So that we'll see that's the maximum attainable gain in a single stage amplifier. Okay, we call that the intrinsic gain. So to find the intrinsic gain, uh, I'll very quickly uh, just, I've shown the small signal model here, but you, you can even look at the MOS device itself here and analyze it. So if you look at the MOS device here, you can visualize R0 here. So I've shown it here. So the, there is a current you are applying. Now the source is at a higher potential compared to the drain, uh, gate. So you'll have a current flowing from source to drain. Instead of drain to source, a current of value GMVI, okay, uh, flowing from source to drain. Now that current at this point, when it reaches the drain, 
it doesn't have any virus to go because this is open. The current here is zero. So it will loop back through R0. The current will now loop back through R0 and uh, it will flow back at the input. I mean, part of it is going to go here and you will have a current getting looping back. Okay. In fact, uh, the, there won't be any current drawn from the input as well. Uh, so because this current at this node, when you apply, when you apply uh, KCL, okay. So when you apply KCL at this node, the current entering here is equal to the current leaving here. So therefore, using the same logic, I can say that the current entering here is equal to the current leaving at this node. Okay. So no current will be drawn from the in input. So the voltage drop developed across the resistor is going to be GMR0 into VI and the input voltage is VI. So the output voltage V0 is simply going to be sum of this voltage plus this voltage, the voltage across this plus the voltage across this. So the intrinsic gain is simply going to be V0 equals 1 plus GMR0 into VI. Okay. So this is the maximum gain that one can attain using a common, a common uh, gate amplifier. Now, once I load it, once I load it to find that gain, what we can do is we can just represent the common gate as, as like we did with the common source amplifier. Uh, so in a common source amplifier, it was even simpler to derive, but I can always find the Thevenin equivalent seen by the load resistance in a common source amplifier. So we know that the maximum intrinsic gain at this node, the open circuit voltage, how do you find Thevenin equivalent? You open circuit the load and find the open circuit voltage and then find the equivalent output resistance seen by the load resistance or the resistance seen by the load resistance. So the open circuit voltage is simply going to be the intrinsic voltage gain uh, times the input voltage. And uh, that will be the voltage for, a, I'm drawing it for a common source configuration. Okay, so that's going to be minus GMR0 into VI. And the resistance seen by the load resistance is going to be R0. Okay, and this will see RL. Again, we derived this result in the last class. So we're going to get GMR0 into RL by RL plus R0. In a similar way, we can also find a Thevenin representation for a common gate configuration. And uh, we know the intrinsic gain. So this is the open, the intrinsic gain times the input voltage will be the open circuit voltage. When you open the load resistance, that will be the voltage developed across the drain to ground. And the output resistance is measured by grounding the input resistance and seeing uh, grounding the input voltage and measuring the resistance seen at this node. The moment you ground the input resistance, input node, you will not have any GMVI current. So this will be zero. So you, when you apply a voltage here, a test voltage, the entire current will flow through R0 and the resistance seen will be just R0 here. That's what is shown here. So the intrinsic gain, so the, uh, in, the gain of when you load the amplifier is going to reduce from the intrinsic gain. The intrinsic gain is initially minus uh, 1 plus GMR0. Okay. Now it's going to be RL by RL plus R0. So it's again, so that's why I said uh, when you write the maximum gain, if you, it, 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 it always makes an intuitive sense. Uh, this is the loading factor. It's going to be lower than this. Okay. If you look at a common source configuration, it, there the intrinsic gain was minus GMR0 when you did not load it or, uh, or I'll use the word unloaded gain that was later multiplied by the loading factor once you started loading it at the input or the output okay the input loading has no effect uh, because the input impedance of a common source amplifier is infinity so that has no effect but in case of a common gate configuration even that will have an effect okay the input impedance will have an effect we will come to that a little later okay so before that since we are talking about gain in common gate configuration so I thought I'll discuss a very interesting property of a common gate configuration. In a common source configuration, for example, we said if I apply an input VI and try to find the intrinsic gain, it is simply minus GM R0 times VI. Okay. Now what happens when I apply input at the output? So that I'll try to measure the reverse gain. I'll apply an input at the drain terminal. I'm applying between drain and source and trying to see will I get any output at the gate? Okay, you will not get any, it's in, uh, the, the, the voltage at the gate is indeterminate because uh, there is no direct path linking the gate and the drain terminals here. Even though I'm modifying the drain terminal here, the gate terminal is not, there is nothing to, you know, uh, 
there is there is there is no element to actually you know try to create a path from input to output or the gate terminal there is not no there is no driving force to change the gate terminal okay so the gate terminal will remain uh, the value of the gate terminal is not determined you cannot say what happens to the output voltage okay but in a common gate configuration something interesting happens so for example if i apply a voltage vi here okay now again i'll first assume that the, the lambda is zero if lambda is zero there is no interaction between drain and source so there r not is infinity so even though i apply a voltage vi there won't be any you can't say what is the input voltage that is voltage at the source terminal that's again indetermined okay indeterminate you cannot determine what is the voltage at that point however when you assume a finite or not when you assume a finite or not you will see a very interesting phenomenon so when you apply a finite or not what happens is there is a resistor which is trying to connect this output and input terminal so there can be some kind of current flowing through this okay and when there is a current so then this node voltage has to change you know because it's trying to flow here so you are driving it with you are driving at the drain so drain is a low impedance node okay so when you apply your input signal you can see there is some kind of uh, current that can flow through or not and the current value the impedance seen into the uh, source terminal again uh, i haven't defined defined about impedance seen in the source terminal but i'll very briefly write it here so let's say there was no r not in a mosfet lambda is zero so i am now connecting some finite load resistance r not is infinity or lambda is zero so if i apply a voltage vi the current drawn by this device is going to be gmvi so as far as the input is concerned this mosfet looks like a resistance of value 1 by gm okay so the same thing happens here in this circuit so this voltage at this node at the, at the input node when you are trying to look at it it looks as though there is a resistance of value 1 by gm at the input okay so now for as far as input is concerned it concerned it sees a resistance r not and a resistance 1 by gm so the current drawn will simply be equal to vi by r not plus 1 by gm okay so that will be the current drawn from the input okay so this can be written as uh gm by 1 plus gm r not into vi that will be the current which is actually flowing in r not right now okay now again i have open circuited the i have actually open circuited the source node i have open circuited the source node so no current can flow here no current can flow at the output so any current that is flowing through r not will also flow through the source okay through the mosfet and similarly at this node uh, let me just So let me just uh, exaggerate that node a little bit. So any current that is entering here should also flow through. So if I assume this is V naught, the current flowing through this is going to be G M V naught, okay? And this is V I. And we already discussed what will be the value of G M V naught, okay? So the value of G M V naught is simply the current. that's flowing from the input if there were an input which was driving this okay so you know the voltage at this point so you you know the voltage at this point and uh, from that you also know the impedance seen here which is 1 by gm i'm driving this with a voltage source okay 1 by gm so the current flowing through r not is going to be vi upon 1 plus gm r not into gm we just uh, derived it few moments ago this value will be equal to gm v not okay that's what is shown here okay so from that i can say your v not is actually vi by 1 plus gm r not okay so now if you see v not is defined here unlike a common gate configuration a common uh, source configuration we couldn't define what is v not when i apply the input at the output terminal okay so that is why in a common gate configuration it's it's because of the presence of r not 
it brings a kind of a bilateral nature to common gate amplifier okay so even when there is some you can also say there is some kind of a kickback from output to input output back to the input okay or a reverse gain so you can actually have gain from output back to the input you will not have this at least at low frequencies you will not have this for common source configuration even in common gate common drain configuration you will not have this reverse gain but you will have it only in common gate configuration even at low frequencies okay so i have actually computed this is the maximum reverse gain for a common gate amplifier okay so if i apply the input later uh, i mean in fact why am i discussing this i'll later use these intuitions uh, to talk a lot about the input the impedances of a common gate amplifier which is why i wanted to spend one full lecture on the impedances of uh, common gate input and output impedances of common gate amplifier okay so fine so this is about the intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier we so far seen that the intrinsic gain is positive it is 1 plus gm or not for a common gate amplifier okay and by adding a loading effect the gain gets reduced and we saw that the loading effect especially when you add a load resistance the effect is very similar to a common source amplifier okay the gain reduces by a factor of rl by uh, rl by rl plus r not okay but in case of a common source amplifier the input impedance is infinity but that's not the case for a common gate amplifier the input impedance is not infinity for a common gate amplifier okay so the important point here is that common gate amplifier can also have a reverse gain if i apply the input at the output you will also get some finite value of uh, out i mean a finite output at the input terminal which is a source terminal and that will be simply 1 by the intrinsic gain okay yeah so that will be 1 by the intrinsic gain that will be the reverse gain of a common gate amplifier so now uh, to measure the gain of a common gate amplifier intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier you can use a setup like this uh, again uh, it's a very uh, here i am using current biasing as we said uh, it's a nice exercise to find how does the intrinsic gain vary with current and w by l ratio so in this setup uh, you are ac coupling the input to the source at this point and this capacitor should be chosen very large such that it rec it it acts like a short circuit for most of the frequencies of interest again you will have to choose your rb in this setup much greater than r not so if i try to draw the ac equivalent of the circuit the ac equivalent is going to be this capacitor is a short circuit and this capacitor will also be a short so the circuit will simply reduce to something like this sorry and the output will be at b not here i have made the assumption that your rb is much greater than r not so i can ignore it i can assume it like an open circuit so it reduces to the uh, the intrinsic gain i mean the well known setup for that we had uh, used for the analysis of intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier okay uh, so this is it about the intrinsic gain the gain of a con common gate amplifier we all we have discussed the intrinsic gain and how does the gain change by uh, by changing the load resistance by in fact by adding a load resistance we saw that it the gain was actually reducing so uh, in the next lecture i'll start discussing about the input and output impedances of common gate amplifier